A very good morning to everyone. My name is Parthivan. Today we are going to speak about secure and encrypted boot in Zephyr Autos. And before we get started into the topic, the same topic was already presented earlier this year in OSS uh, conferences in Europe, in Vienna. So the presentation was shorter and uh, we kept under 20 minutes, like 15 minutes time. Length. And um, that's the main reason we decided to present the same thing for OSS Japan as well. But eventually, due to personal reasons, I couldn't come in person. So I would like to do the offline recording instead for the um, OSS Japan, which will be later uploaded into the YouTube. Let's get started. My name is Parthiban and I'm part of Linamis. Uh, Linamis is an embedded software servicing company currently based out of Berlin, uh, in Germany and also in India. So we primarily work on embedded uh, software development for Linux and as well as Zephyr. Um, primarily in terms of port supported packages, drivers, kernel development and build systems like Yoke 2 and uh, so on for Linux. Uh, specifically speaking about Zephyr Autos, we do SOC porting, board porting, uh, driver development and so on. That's our primary goal of the uh, services. And I myself live in Berlin. And today we're going to speak about MCU boot. Uh, in summary, how MCU boot can handle secure booting and uh, how we can do the hardware-based secure booting using MCU boot together with Zephyr auto support. As an overview, uh, MCU boot is an OS independent uh, bootloader. Let's say, uh, when I say OS independent, the portion of bootloading itself and also the signed uh, signature verification and OTA uh, updates and so on is basically OS independent. But when it comes to a uh, specific nature of what it's going to boot underneath and how MCU boot is basically supported, um, that's basically depend on OS. For now, with our uh, goal is stick with Zephyr Artas and how secure booting works with uh, Zephyr Artas together with MCU boot. That's our goal. Apart from Zephyr Artas, MCU boot also support uh, NATAX, uh, Apache Minute, and so on and so forth. There are multiple other ports. And you can potentially port MCU boot into your bare metal applications or any other building operating system for that matter. There are two goals for MCU boot, which is uh, the underneath. Um, the one is secure booting your application, which is Zephyr for Artas or any other application space. And the next one is ODE. When I say over the air software update, uh, the role of um, playable update is about swapping one image from slot one partition to slot zero partition, which we will see in a moment as a brief and how it is handled. But the goal of this talk is not about over the air software update. Instead, you can refer our previous presentations in OSS conference or other various materials which is available in the internet regarding it. But our goal is to speak about Secure Boot today. Before we jump into Secure Boot, you will see a brief overview about how the image is basically layered or your flash is going to be partitioned by default when we are using MCU Boot. When we are using MCU Boot, that is your second stage boot loader, which would be triggered uh, immediately when the SOC comes out of reset. So the first stage is basically your ROM code and the second stage would eventually be the MCU boot, which lives at the base address of your uh, flash typically. And you will have a couple of other partitions, which is slot zero and slot one, where slot zero is your primary partition, which is the application partition, which comes together with Zephyr Autos and your application itself, which will be chain loaded by the MCU boot. And speaking about slot one, which is typically used for over-the-air software update. When we do an over-the-air software update, the application space which is running in slot zero is responsible for downloading your newer version of the software and flash it into slot one and do a few um, updates to the flags into the MCU boot partition and the images and reset the target. When it reset into a new uh, cycle, 
the MC book looks for the flag and figure out there is like a new image which is available in slot one, which would eventually take care of swapping the image between slot one and slot zero using the scratch area as a temporary memory. And now your newer image will boot and the newer image is also responsible for confirming that image is valid and it has also booted fine. Otherwise, it can have a mechanism of swapping back towards your previous running image if your newly downloaded images fail to boot for some reason. That is the integral part of OE. And that's not the goal of the presentation today, which means like this is the only slide which we're gonna speak about it now. When you, are, when you are not interested about doing the OTA support for MCU board, you will don't need to have multiple slots like slot zero, slot one, and scratch area. Instead, you can just keep MCU boot and only one slot was for the whole application, or you can keep additional protections for your user data or configuration information and so on. Today's goal is to find how secure boot uh, can be achieved using MCU boot together with Zephyr Autos. So the secure boot starts off with the chain of trust and the chain of trust starts off with the root of trust. The root of trust is basically starting with the ROM code. So ROM code is again specific towards each and every specific SOCs. Let's say for example, NXP's IDOTMX series supports a specific feature of categories like it can do secure booting your second stage bootloader or even encrypted boot for your second stage bootloader. But wherein like SOCs of different category doesn't provide such features. So you probably can compare with Nordic SOCs where it can provide a secure boot, but not at the extent of IDOTMX series. But you can compare this with Espresso ESP32 series. It can provide secure booting, but not encrypted boot. So the idea is, the stages of booting or the root of trust starts from the ROM code itself. And when it uh, lies with root of trust in the ROM code, so you have to see whether your SOC basically supports what stages of security it provides. And it is the goal of the ROM code you have to see. And you have to refer this information from your technical reference manual of the respective SOC. But to stick with the uh, goal of this presentation to do how secure back booting can be achieved for the whole chain of trust, you will start off with the ROM code, how it can be doing the secure booting for the MCU boot. We will take an example of i.mx service, which is basically you can consider i.mx RT SOC, which comes with a feature called high assurance boot, which is the, has a capability to do the secure booting. How it does the secure booting? Basically, your MCU boot image itself is going to be signed and we would keep the signed set data together with the MCU boot and the target site when we boot it, the hardware has the capability to verify the integrity of the image, whether it is not tampered or tampered or it is free to boot and so on. So that's the flow, but it basically can be achieved using a private public key combination, which is the public key infrastructure. And using the private key, you are gonna sign the hash of the MCU boot and club it together with the MCU boot, which is called CSF, which is the code signing file data, which is appended towards the MCU boot and flashed into the i.mx flash region. So basically, when I say i.mx flash region, it could be the uh, your NOR flash, or it could be your SD card, it could be any form of bootable medium, which is the SOC which we're gonna trying to start from. This is achieved from the host side by meaning signing and flashing is uh, done from the host side. But during the boot process, it needs to verify the integrity of the image. This case, this can be basically done by verifying the hash of the root key. So when I say root key, which is the private key, um, hash of the root key is basically fused into the i.mx series or into the OTP region fuses. So this is uh, basically emitted from a set of proprietary tools from NXP, which is code signing to CSD in short. It will emit SRK hashes and it needs to be flashed into your OTP region. When you power on the target, when the SOC comes out of reset, the ROM code basically reads the uh, bootable medium, uh, for example, flash, and looks for the image in the bootable medium 
let's say the MCU boot itself, it would copy this image into the internal RAM, which is OC RAM, and uses the SRK hash to compute the hash against the MCU boot and verify the hash integrity that and also the signed integrity of the particular MCU boot itself. So that's the explanation she's shown in the presentation, wherein like the CSF data is going to be used for verifying the hash using the public key hash, which has fused into the OTP. And also it's going to verify the hash of the MCU boot by computing it from the image itself. And there are two considerable points when we are choosing this, uh, when it's specific towards i.mx ROM. So um, the MCU boot itself is going to be copied into the OCRAM and going to be uh, the secure booting process or the verification process is going to happen inside the OCRAM in internally. So this is restricted towards the size of the OCRAM. So this varies from one SOC to another SOC from an XP series. So based on your requirement, you have to choose the right amount of OC RAM capable SOC and then you can fit in. Typically, the MCU boots uh, stripped down configuration basically fits within uh, 32 kilobytes of your storage. So basically that should be enough for achieving the secure boot with high assurance boot. And one other point which needs to be considered is basically the device needs to be closed. When I say closed, there are a set of other key fuses which needs to be written or burned so that the OTP keys cannot be tampered with as well. So that is another set of keys and you have to enable them or burn them to make the device completely secure. And this as a whole process uh, during the power up sequence from the wrong code uh, using the asymmetric cryptographic algorithm like private key and public key combination basically helps in a way to do the secure booting of the first stage that is from the ROM to the MCU boot itself. So once again, to say this is super specific towards uh, SOC, uh, which you're gonna use. If you choose an SOC from a different vendor other than NXP, probably you will have a different capabilities. You have to refer the technical reference model of the respective SOC and then figure out, okay, whether the SOC is capable of doing secure booting or it can do the encrypted booting or so. And then you have to achieve that using their own um, tools from the vendor. Now that we did the first stage of booting from ROM to the MCU boot, we will speak about how MCU boot can do the secure booting process from uh, MCU boot and chain load into the separate application. Once again, the same mechanism applies as like what we discussed earlier for the high assurance boot. So we would need to have a private and public key combination, which is RSA or other forms of keys which you can use, which is supported currently in the MCU boot. Basically, the hash of the Zephyr RTAS image itself is computed and placed into the TLD record. And basically, this public keys um, key hash, for example, you will have a public key and as well as a private key combination for signing the, um, the hash of the Zephyr RTAS image. And we would also basically keep the hash of the public key itself in the TLD record. And one other information which will be part of the TLD record is the signature itself, which is the signed data using the private key. Uh, in this case, we would sign the hash of the Zephyr Auto's image and then put it to this TLD record. This is the process which needs to happen during the host compilation stage. And basically this is mostly automatic now using the build utilities like West together with image tool. And uh, once you trigger the respective configurations in Compile, then you would get the, get the final image, which is basically signed and all of these processes done. The only part which needs to take care from your end would be to keep the private key secure and uh, give the public key together for the comp compilation environment. During the boot up sequence, on the other side, basically um, the MCU boot computes the hash of the image, which is basically placed in the slot zero, which is the primary slot, and computes the hash and basically verifies this hash against the TLV record. So when I say um, computes and uh, compares the hash, basically the hash itself 
is signed and placed in the DLB record. And as well as we have the hash directly placed in the DLB record. So the integrity of the image itself can be verified using the signature and the using the public key. Uh, it is going to uh, verify the integrity of the signature. So you could potentially ask where the public key will be reside. So the public key basically reside together with the MC boot in the primary slot or the um, in, in, in the MCU boot slot itself. So using the public key, it's going to verify the integrity of the signature. And then if the validity is true, then eventually it is going to boot the image in the slot zero. If there is no validity or the failure, and if we damper the image in this slot zero, then it will not boot. So that's the integrity verification. Then the next important question which comes always into the mind is say, if we have MCU together with the public key, also the signature data uh, integrated together into a TLV record, all together placed into the flash, and one can potentially change the flash sections, let's say the MCU board itself or the slot zero image itself and damper the respective signature values and then boot an unauthorized code. So that comes the, the uh, importance of the hardware secure boarding. That's our primary goal of the next slide. So uh, this is the portion of uh, chain of trust of security, which is explained right here about how the secure booting is happening in the target side um, and how it basically verifies the key hash and compares it against and uh, do uh, authenticity there. And speaking about hardware keys, MC boot has the capability to uh, retrieve the hash of the public key Let's say in, in, in this scenario, uh, we compute the hash of the public key and place into the TLV record, which is part of the image itself or part of the TLV record itself. So one can tamper it and change it. Instead of doing this, when we enable configuration for hardware keys, there is a hook function which is provided as part of the MCU boot, which can help retrieve the hash or the key hash itself from an external medium. So when I say external medium, and this external medium could be primary flat flash or OTP region or depend on the hardware features, wherever it could be, it could be on the DPM or external ISOCs and so on. So as long as the retrieval of the key from the external medium is secure, the process can be secure. So that wholly depends on how we implement the hook function to retrieve the public key. So include the public key in the image itself is the primary um, primary options you need to give. Let's say uh, when you try to compile it, you have to set this option into the key configurations uh, to enable this feature. And also like this hook function can be implemented for uh, specific purposes. Like you can have an external DPM, external AES encryption chip, which can store this key uh, hash and retrieve it, or you can even get it from the hardware capable uh, SOCs. So that comes to the next slide about example, about how do we retrieve the key hash from hardware. So the example shown in this particular slide is basically for Nordics and RF 910. So it got its own OTP keys, uh, which can be fused and also the device can be closed so that like the OTP cannot be changed. So we can make use of this feature and fuse the key hash into the OTP region. And then once it is trying to retrieve it from the booting sequence from MC boot, we can retrieve it from the MC boot as like what we shown in this example, like reading the hash directly from the OTP region and filling what is the hash. And uh, we fill the whole 32 bit size of it, which is 256 uh, SHA. So the two bytes would be written back to the MCU boot. And that would be technically used in the boot sequences here um, for verification. So instead of taking from the DLB record, basically it's going to retrieve from the external medium and it's going to verify the integrity of the public, public key. So if the public key itself is not tampered, it's going to be used for verification. And if the other part, the portions of the image is tampered, but not the public key integrity is already verified, then you can eventually trust the flow of chain by meaning by verifying the public keys integrity. So that's the ideal path you can try. So uh, apart from 
the uh, the usual chain of trust which we spoke right now there are possibilities like you can have uh, mcu boot itself having security box which needs to be solved and uh, eventually which needs to be updated so if you wanted to have an updatable bootloader which is the z boot itself you don't need to keep mcu boot as the second stage bootloader instead you can keep an immutable bootloader under your flash region Uh, which can be protected of some right sequences or tamper proofing and then directly doing this booting sequence for example if you have a immutable bootloader at second stage which will be booted from the rom core and then the immutable bootloader basically take care of booting the mcu boot and then verifying the integrity so that's the next stage of things which you can achieve there are features i mean like you can have uh, your own immutable bootloader or mcu boot itself can be used as an immutable bootloader Um, by stripping the configurations and storing it into that and uh, speaking about this layout we spoke about the first slide about the mcu boot slot 0 and slot 1 as a default uh, partition layout wherein you can change the partition layout and accommodate an additional boot router which is an immutable router in the chain of trust with arm bi being part of microcontroller environment uh, when it comes to cortex n33 and later associates we have the capability to do the secure os and as well as non secure os so the secure os by itself is the tfm application or the reference implementation of tfm and non secure portion which is going to be or the rich set of applications which is going to be the zephyr or dust itself so in this case we will have mcu boot at pl2 uh, security elevation level and uh, secure booting directly from pl1 so that is also possible with current support of zephyr and uh, you can technically achieve this with higher resources like cortex and 33 or so so that's in short about uh, secure booting uh, your zephyr or dust application so as a follow up to this presentation probably i would present you some examples as a different set of uh, presentations with how to do secure booting using mcu boot in uh, an rf91 or uh, i.mx rt series using high assurance boot and encrypted uh, storage using dcp coprocessor module as part of the hardware so i would uh, do a follow up on this and uh, do some various other example presentations probably uploaded in the later stages but for now that is it about secure booting it so for um summary let's say uh, what we spoke about high assurance boot and other uh, hardware related security features which is basically currently supported um so for our also the mcu boot itself doesn't have an abstracted infrastructure at this point of time for high assurance boot in the mcu boot uh, or even a hardware specific abstractions which is uh, not there so which is currently ongoing effort from us but there is a new set of uh, activities which has got merged in the upcoming zephyr 4.0 release which is trusted key store for uh, zephyr autos itself which you can have a look and we are also trying to bring ppm support into zephyr autos to do the uh, support in a way like you can have tpm as an external source of trust to store the keys and as well as acceleration module in there so that's an ongoing effort so otherwise you can have our uh, look about ota presentation which was done a few a couple of years ago in uh, oss regarding ota how, how you can achieve ota uh, using separators otherwise there are a few references given uh to do the secure booting uh, which were presented by david brown from linaro otherwise uh, that's it for today uh, in this talk um as i'm not in person for the us is japan uh, you could potentially uh, write me your questions to this email address and then i'm happy to answer it thank you so much for listening